Shout out to class of 2007. It's been 10 years since I've graduated. Good gracious. But it's your lucky year. Excited about it. You guys go out and conquer the world. The biggest challenge that I faced when I graduated was by, by far the fact that my faith was challenged by so many people. And, and I made a big mistake of, of going to college and um, not really getting involved with anybody else who could be a support group. I thought that I was an island that could stand on my own. And um, I went to college and got mixed up in a lot of things that I shouldn't have just because I didn't have a support group of people who believed the way I did and were willing to be there for me in the midst of troubled times because troubled times do come in college. I think those are the places where um, your, your faith is tested more than any other. And also on top of that, um, high school for me was really in terms of just school in general was a breeze. I mean, it's just fun. And at the time I thought this is a uh, tough work. Um, but when I got to college, I realized that there was a whole lot more that went on in life than just my little studies. And, um, and so I, I guess that was by far my biggest challenge, my faith being challenged every single day because professors will say things that will shock you. Uh, and these guys are pretty knowledgeable. I mean, they spend time studying and then figuring out ways that they can shake you up. Um, and then on top of that, just um, not being prepared for the workload that was coming. What turned that around for me? Honestly, um, the first time I got connected with an awesome church, and more than anything, you know, there's college ministries and stuff like that that I got involved in, but what really turned it around for me is when I was put in a position where I was actually a leader in a high school ministry. Um, when I was, not, not necessarily like the, the youth minister or anything like that, but I just started helping out with um, the younger guys, and I really started seeing the need for Christ in their lives, and really it was, became the thing that held me accountable because I recognized that my responsibility was to far more than just myself, but also as an example for people around me. So I encourage people, um, get involved in a college ministry somewhere, and then on top of that, look for ways that you can serve um, other, other people because I think that's when you find that you're going to study harder because you've been called to a higher level of accountability. Yeah, probably the number one thing that I'm most proud of was just getting involved in, in, younger, in, the, in the younger guys' lives at my church and doing different missions trips and stuff like that because those were the places where I found my center. Those were the places where I recognized um, that God had a plan for me and that, that His plan for me was not only to be led by other people but to lead as well. Um, and so, yeah, probably the things that I'm most proud of um, were um, leading other, other young men uh, to know the Lord and stuff like that, but also um, maybe once I started doing that and I and I really became firm in my faith and really became a great leader on campus uh, where I was, and not only on campus but just in my life in general, there was, there's not, not a great leader, sorry, excuse me, but um, there was a place where I really flipped the switch and I decided, okay, this is who I am, I'm not changing, um, and it was actually kind of a little bit of my way of, you know, I almost enjoyed the rebellion of it. Um, Personally, you know, so that was the big thing for me when I flipped the switch and I became solid and sought after the Lord. Those are the moments when I was most proud because I did some really cool things there with other people at that time. Uh, finding a church that was extremely difficult for me because I showed up at a couple of BS BSU things and uh, just didn't click immediately. Um, but what ended up happening was I had some good friends who invited me to go uh, to church. Uh, it's actually Forest Hills in Raleigh, North Carolina is where I went to church uh, when I was at NC State. And um, my friends were instrumental in getting me to church. I just listened and took a chance and went. And it was odd for me at first because as much as people might believe that I'm a people person, that I'm really outgoing and all that type of stuff, it's really hard for me to walk in a room that I don't know unless I've, you know, I've, I've learned how to flip that switch on. But for a long, long time, I couldn't handle that. It was too much for me. But just taking a chance and following my friends and, and uh and finding that they, they just wanted to show me a great time, and that's where, where it kind of started for me. Yeah, what surprised me most about the transition was the fact that suddenly consequences, or my actions had consequences, and I never did anything that was crazy and just outlandish, but, you know, if I didn't pay my parking tickets, all of a sudden my car had a boot on it, and I was like, well, what do, what do I do with this? Do I call mom? No, I can't do that. Um, I think that that's the big thing, you know, you, you, when you're in high school a lot of things are fun and you can do things that um, that it can be washed away under the fountain of youth, we were talking about that, but um, it, suddenly, you know, these things are, are big, you know, the mistakes that you make now count and there's nobody else to take account of, or to be accountable for those things except for you, so, you know, when you're walking into this new transition and this new life, I challenge you guys to walk into it strong and firmly walking, on the truth, walking in the truth of the Lord. 
and, hum and humbleness and, uh, and just uh, recognize that your actions matter now. The first thing that I would do over um, if I had a chance to redo college, the first year would be that I would plug in as quickly as I could. Um, I would walk in with my eyes open looking for other believers um, and dive into friendships with them, pour into their lives and expect them to do the same with me because one of the things that I know now is that everybody there is just as insecure as you are. Everybody there wants friends just like you do and everybody that's a believer lo would love to surround themselves with other believers just like you. It's just some people um, have the capacity to go out and fight for it and, uh, and if I had done that my first uh, year or two would have been very very different and I wouldn't have fallen into some of the traps that I fell into that were not necessarily the best things in my life. Well I think the song Fearless is something that I, that, I, that I wrote more out of what I aspire to be than what I actually am. Um, I think it's, it's easy to say that you're a fearless follower of Christ, but it's very hard to act that out. Um, and I think the big thing for me was just yeah, I needed something to say to night after night that, I, that would be something for me to rally behind and be a battle cry so that when I stepped on the stage, um, I could really be that, that man who would fearlessly follow after Christ. And I think that as you guys walk in, or as they walk into um, college, you just have a whole lot of opp opportunity to fall underneath the pressure. And I think that one of the things, that, another thing that I would add in terms of things to do right away is to recognize that none of the, the conflicts and the fears that are part of your life are going to go away until you face them up. And my dad always told me, square your shoulders up to those things you're afraid of, face them down, deal with them now, so that you don't have to keep dealing with them over and over and over for the rest of your life. Um, and so that's something that, you know, as, as these young people head off to college, I would challenge them to. Um, you're going to have conflict. There are going to be things that happen that, you're, that you don't want to deal with. There are going to be all kinds of different things um, that jump up in your face, but um, I challenge you just to be a fearless follower of Christ and part of being that is stepping up and facing down those things that are the things you're most afraid of and I think that when you walk through those you're, you're stretched to the point to where the next time you face something like that you're a little bit more fearless and ready to face it again.